in which ways will artificial intelligence and machine learning improve asset management now and in the future? So the way that we like to think about AI and machine learning and finance is it's really about trying to deal with new data sets and measure new things so that we can learn and find better returns, better portfolios and better actions for the way that we think about finance. So in some areas, it's very clear that we can add a lot of value. Those areas where things are predictable, things are repetitive. So things like demographics and studying how um, people make decisions in their portfolios and trying to help them to actually make better decisions is a great area where we can actually revolutionize finance. On the other hand, for the field of trading and asset management, it's still going to be very much about thinking about risk and also understanding that there are limitations to predictability in terms of predicting the market. Because remember, predicting the market is like predicting the future. It's hard and it's always been hard. It's going to stay hard. How will the customers know the improvements? Will there be new products or will returns be better or will it be cheaper or...? So I think in that sense, we're going to have options to actually customize things for individuals more going forward Mm -hmm. um, in the sense that you can understand people's behavior. Let me give an example. We did a paper um, with myself, Andrew Lowe, and several of the co-authors where we looked at um, demographics and behavior and investors and tried to predict panic selling. So things like this example where we might be able to actually help investors make better decisions and also customize things within the financial industry is an area where we can help investors across the board do a better job avoiding some of the pitfalls of investing. So maybe not primarily higher returns, but more customizing, giving, figuring out what each customer wants and and delivering what they want. Exactly, because I think at the end of the day, for most investors, the biggest challenge is to avoid the pitfalls of investing. So underinvestment, making panic sales, or sort of not being in the market has a bigger impact than, say, having a faster and better trading strategy, because I think we all know that's very difficult. Okay. The development you can see ahead of us, would you describe that as evolution or revolution? This seems to be different in different parts of the economy, how big the changes will be. How, w- how will it be in asset management? So I think this is another example of it depends on your use case. So for the case of asset management, predicting returns is always going to be difficult because we're all competing in the same financial markets. So there it's going to be evolutionary. But in some areas, like understanding individual demographics for investors, creating better solutions, access, and other ways of measuring new things, we have the ability to actually improve and be revolutionary in how people manage and invest money. Will it mean that you need new competencies? Will you hire new people with different training than you have done in the past? So I think this has been the case across the board and you've seen a massive shift towards data science within the financial sector. Um, You're seeing more and more people using more data and thus needing individuals have the competence to assess that data, use it to measure new things and utilize that data in a way to create better solutions for investors. So students who want to go into asset management should try to specialize more in in computer sciences and coding and that kind of Yes, that's actually the case. And we're seeing that in the U.S. as well. We're seeing in general people blending different areas and that's where we're seeing the best innovation. So being able to understand how to use the data and also understanding the finance is actually an intersection of those two fields where you can have innovation Mm -hmm. in the space. Mm -hmm. So competition in financial markets going forward, will that be the firm with the smartest algorithm? Will so they'll come out as number one or will it still be a people business or, or both, I suppose? Well, finance is always a people business. It's about trusting someone to invest your assets or your, your, your wealth. And thus, we're always going to need people involved in the process. So in that sense, what we need is people that know the tools, understand their limitations and actually can apply them with enough prudence to understand where they fall apart. OK, so. They, they, they will need to learn financial markets and communication, communicating the algorithms. But then also you will need computer science people and coders. 
That's correct. To manage the data, to understand new data sets, to find techniques to analyze complex data so that it can be used for different purposes within the financial industry. Now you have personally worked both in the Swedish markets and in the, in the US market where you're working right now. Is it, is it very different? Is it sort of technologically more or less in advanced in, in, in different parts of the world? So I think Sweden is a country that has invested a lot in technology. So we're definitely seeing some of the financial industry here has moved in a direction to be more digitalized uh, than say the US as an example. But I think that trend is very global and the theme to be more efficient, to provide more uh, useful tools and to do things better is pretty much the trend for across the globe. So I think Sweden, given their ability to, or as a country, its ability to invest in tech, and its ability to focus on uh, new solutions in that area has a good chance of being able to uh, be ahead of the game if uh, they continue to do so.